by business people was a very bad idea. And by the 21st century, when economic inequality was reaching unprecedented extremes, coupled with a growing ecological crisis, many more were realizing something had to be done. But there is one that sticks out to me in the context of the value system disorder present at the time. An iconic speech given by a man named Omar Badillo. Omar was born in poverty in Los Angeles, California. And as a young man, he just happened to win the largest state lottery ever in 2037. And he decided to use that money to solve the vast homeless crisis in his hometown. He funded nonprofits, established housing, treatment centers, not only getting people off the streets, but really helping them recover and acclimate something that hadn't been done before. And they gave him a Nobel Peace Prize for it. But what he had to say during his speech wasn't exactly what they expected. Mine damer och herrar, det är en glädje för oss att önska välkommen till vinnaren av Nobels fredpris, Omar Padillo. Thank you. And while I'm happy for those we have helped over the past few years, taking about 75,000 homeless off the Los Angeles streets, I must say that the problem at hand runs much deeper than the poverty we see around us. When I created this program, focusing on just this one regional crisis, my long-term hope was that it would set a new precedent, that those who disproportionately benefit in this world would be inspired, step up, and help take responsibility for the plight of the less fortunate. After all, what I have done here is merely a patch that can only help a few. For the true source of poverty, our social system continues to go unaddressed. We live in a world of stories and myths, and we've been told that the vast inequities that we see is the price we must pay for innovation and progress. Well, innovation to what end? And how do we define this notion of progress? For if progress is about how much one can own, the availability of jobs, the state of a nation's GDP, the rise of the stock market, or the development of some gadget to entertain and distract you, then we face a serious existential crisis. I submit that true progress can only be measured in the health, stability, integrity, and responsible freedom of a civilization. Responsible to ourselves, responsible to each other, and responsible to the earthly habitat we all share. And by those measures, my friends, there is now little progress to be found. As we all sit idly by, presupposing that the way society works is the only way it ever could. That said, if it's true that we must persist in this inhumane economic order, an order that has proven it can only create affluence for a minority at the cost of destitution for the majority, then our only choice is to seek a new level of humanitarian effort. Today, three people have more wealth than the bottom 75% of the world's population. Six billion people. The total wealth of the 4,000 billionaires out there have the means to end global poverty a hundred times over. And yet, if you study their philanthropy, it is clear that they are far more concerned with their own interests, their own comforts, than working to counter this ongoing structural violence. You see, there's a deeper kind of poverty here. A spiritual poverty. A poverty that grows a culture of sociopaths. And the more they have, the more they want. And the less they seem to care otherwise. Moral bankruptcy, hiding behind this age-old story that one can have a billion dollars in the bank while others starve, is somehow natural to the human condition. In a number of months, my program will end, as the funds will be gone. And to date, not one wealthy so-called philanthropist has offered to help keep the program running. Now I know this event is about peace, but it must be understood that the wealthy of this world, those at the root of true political power, are sick. Their priorities have nothing to do with true progress, and the time for tolerance is over. The billionaires of this world are not symbols of success. 
They are symbols of violence. And until that violence ends, there will be no peace on this planet.